Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I hope that everybody is doing well. I feel like today is a special episode, one just before Ramadan, and I hope that this one will be a beneficial one for everybody. How is everybody doing? I hope you guys are doing great. Let us know in in the comment section on our Facebook page how you guys are preparing yourself for Ramadan spiritually, mentally, physically. I'd love to hear it. And inshallah, if you guys do have anything you want to share on this episode today, feel free to call in on the number on screen. As always, I do love to hear from all of you. And if you have any questions, whether it's about Ramadan or anything in general, feel free to WhatsApp us on the number that's shown on screen. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm so excited. I don't know whether Ramadan, if you're celebrating it tomorrow or on Sunday, but I'm sure everybody is feeling the buzz. Everybody is preparing themselves. I know I am. I have been really trying to rectify my intentions, prepare myself spiritually, get into that habit of reciting more Quran and just mentally preparing myself for the weeks to come. And today, inshallah, I want to talk more about the intentions and talk about the changes that we can strive to make in Ramadan. And before I do get started, I want to point out that everybody's spiritual journey is going to be so different. So whether you're, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, I want to make changes but I'm not sure where to start then stay tuned because inshallah this Ramadan I want it to be a different one for myself every year we do strive to make our Ramadan Ramadan a beneficial one but this year inshallah I want to talk more about making small small changes in your life just tiny ones the ones that we can changes that we can bring into our lives and implement in our lives but the ones that we can carry on and continue and let allow them to change the way we live and allow it to change the connection that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I'm sure every Ramadan comes by and we're surrounded by it's an amazing beautiful atmosphere and we're surrounded by people making amazing changes maybe it's the amazing sister who decides to wear the hijab maybe it's the brother who attends masjid five times a day and the changes are there and it feels so good and then Ramadan kind of comes to an end and Eid happens and then the changes that we made in Ramadan or we made this intention to change in Ramadan then they kind of fizzle out and you see that by the the next the next Ramadan comes and we're at stage back at that square one we don't want it to be like that we want it to be that the changes we make are things that really change the way we live our lives because at the end of the day the way we are in Ramadan it really does set the tone for the rest of the year and it can either you can either basically you can you can choose it to be a make it or break it moment this Ramadan can be that for you so if I do feel like for myself personally you have ups and downs throughout the year you your iman is never going to be on this constant high anyway so Ramadan is that time where you are doing more ibadah you are trying to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even more that's that's normal and then you have times of the year where you sort of have dips and that's normal, you know, even the most beloved people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their iman will be up and down. And of course, we do strive to be the most obedient and seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single day of our life. But this Ramadan, hopefully we do feel that spiritual high. We do um, taste that sweetness of iman and seeking that pleasure if, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our actions. But before we get started and talk more about the big changes we can make, I want to talk about the little ones, the little shifts that we make and how to shift your mindset so that you're going in without thinking that, okay, this is only for Ramadan and I'm and you want it to be more of a long lasting change. So what I say is obviously, first of all, make the intention, make the intention and set realistic goals of things that you want to start in Ramadan. Because remember guys, it is easier to start things in Ramadan because the devil's locked up, he's locked away 30 days, um, 29 days, whatever it is, he's locked up. So we don't have to exert more effort in fighting the demon and the devil because we have Allah on our side. Allah has showered this um, month with so much blessings and barakah and it becomes easier. So it's a great place to start, right? So if there's anything that maybe it's something small maybe it's building your connection with the quran just giving you guys a few examples of things that we may want to do a little bit more in our everyday day-to-day living 
for me it, it was a building that connection with the Quran a lot more memorizing some eyes of the Quran and really building that up because for me personally it does get difficult I have a very busy life and sitting down to memorize Quran can get tricky and it's not something that I do every day but one of the things that I want to do more this year is take time out to memorize more Quran so that by the next Ramadan that comes, I will have, be, I can say to myself that Alhamdulillah, inshallah, I'm praying that this is a success for me. May keep you, me in your du'as and make du'a that Allah keeps me steadfast in this. But I want to memorize a little bit more so that when the next Ramadan comes, I can celebrate my progress and know that I've done that solely for Allah's pleasure and I was consistent and disciplined on that. So whatever it is for you, make the intention and write it down. Write that down. Whether it's, alhamdulillah, it's so easy for us. We can just pick up our phone, put a um, put something in our notes. or It's so easy. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put things in my calendar to check in with myself. Uh, you know, alhamdulillah, just pick up our, our phones. We put things in our calendar, little reminders, so that I can actually remind myself throughout the month. Maybe it's a month from now two months from now, three months from now, and I'm going to put little reminders in my phone to check in with myself to see how I'm going on that journey. So it will, it will remind me, it will motivate me to carry on with that. Because this is something, I always say, every Ramadan, we should take one thing with us. Of course, it's, we're not going to continue on that spiritual high that Allah has blessed us with in Ramadan, but let us take something from this Ramadan so that our heart is softened to, towards our deen, towards... Allah's pleasure it wants to do more because in this day of sin in this in in this culture of so much disobedience and sin that we live in I feel like our hearts like our hearts are hard we're numb we're so numb and it's only when we're in Ramadan and we're sitting on that prayer mat for longer periods of times and we're starving ourselves and we're going hungry for hours and hours solely for Allah that's when our heart softens and we have these moments of realization that I need to change my life but we want to carry that on so make the intention in Ramadan this is one act and let it don't don't do too much and I know that sounds crazy and I know you're thinking why not I want to do more Yes, in Ramadan, do more ibadah, do more, pray more, do your nawaf and do your everything, do, uh, up your dhikr. But I'm saying in terms of the thing that you want to carry on continuously, be realistic because we don't want to have that self-sabotage behavior where we say, I want to do, uh, I want to stand up all night in prayer for, for the rest of the year. That's what I want to do. If you can do that, amazing. Alhamdulillah. May Allah give you that tawfiq to be able to do that. But if that's not something that realistically you can do, then don't put that on your list of things that you want to continue with. Because when you don't do that, when you're not able to do that, then you feel very disappointed in yourself. You can feel very demotivated thinking that, oh, I wasn't able to do this. But let me just give up. Let me just throw the towel in. Instead, be realistic. Because Allah loves those deeds that are small but consistent. We don't want to be those people that go all out on a, on a Jum'a. We do all the good deeds and we do nothing throughout the week. We don't, we don't want to be those people. We want to be that we're building this consistent relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're connecting with Allah. And if it's through that one small deed that you decided that this is it for me, this is what I want to do sincere, sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only for you, Allah. And I'm going to do it with the intention that this small act of mine that I'm doing for you, Allah, whether it's addressing more modesty, whether it's attending the masjid for salah, maybe it is upping, I'm saying small things, maybe it's sitting on the prayer mat after your fajr salah and, and doing more dhikr, asking for more forgiveness. I'm saying these are the small things that can honestly change the way we live and connect with Allah because that deed in a busy life could be the one thing that we do and we say, Ya Allah, this is for you. This is for us, but this I do this for your pleasure only, only yours. You, Allah, can, re can compensate me, reward me for that, bring blessings in my life because of this deed. And we want it to be that when we do this deed, we do it because we want to allow our heart to soften towards connecting with Allah, towards the deen. Like I said, our hearts have become so hard and we stopped, we stopped thinking about acting out of the acting for the pleasure for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this deed, inshallah, write it down, set a reminder on your phone. This is what I'm going to do. So I want to share this with you. Tell people about it. 
tell your children that this is something I want to do, that sense of accountability that we have, because we're so scared to say things out loud. We're so scared to say, oh, I'm going to try wearing the hijab this year because we're scared that, oh, when we don't do it, people are going to judge us. But do you know what? It's a good thing. I'm not saying say do it to show off. It's not to show your good deeds off because obviously that will strip the sincerity out there. But do it for that sense of accountability that I want to do this and that sense of inspiring others to do the same. So choose something that's small, something that you can do because Allah loves those deeds. Allah loves those small deeds that are consistent. And when you're able to do that successfully and you start seeing that change in your life, because you do, because when you do things for Allah's sake, Allah will give you barakah. Allah will give you blessings. Allah will compensate you somehow. Oh, there's no way we do good for only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah doesn't do anything for us in return. That, that will always, they will, that light, that nur, that barakah in our life that comes for those who do things for Allah's pleasure is different. No, it can't, nothing can compare to that. So inshallah, it starts with intention and then we follow with action. We follow with good action, inshallah. We follow with consistent action. And then after that, we can add more things. We can bring more things into our life slowly, slowly. Once it becomes easy for us, may Allah make this, this um, our way of life, our, our way of life that is steadfast in the deen, make, may Allah make it easy for us, inshallah, and that we can bring more things into our life. So it starts with something small. And then we do something else as well that feels good. Maybe it's giving charity every day. Maybe that's not something you do right now, but then we can go on to staying consistent with another thing. And then another thing, small, small things, small, tiny steps. But these small, tiny steps, when you look at it, inshallah, next Ramadan, we can be like, wow, subhanAllah, this is how far I could come for Allah. And watch how the quality of your life changes as well, inshallah, because at the end of the day, we lose focus so quickly. We do. We're so busy. We've got our children. We've got work. We've got our studies. We've got our family. And it does get busy. But at the end of the day, who are we living this life for? It's for Allah. On Allah alone. So, yes, I know that we are busy, but I'm saying take out five minutes. Take out five minutes every day in Ramadan and, of course, after Ramadan as well. And of course, in Ramadan, we're going to up that ibadah, inshallah. So I'm going to speak more about how we can really build our connection in Ramadan, inshallah, after our break. But if you have any questions at all, feel free to call in on the number on screen, WhatsApp us with your questions, comment on the Facebook page, inshallah. And I will get back to all of them, inshallah. And I will see you all after the break, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Oh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So, guys, we are just talking about how we can really make this Ramadan a changing point in our life. And I'm excited for this. Don't see it as a thing that, oh gosh, I've got to do something this Ramadan. It's gonna, I need to think of something that's gonna and it's gonna stress you out. Do it with that, do it with ease. Do it with ease. Don't put yourself through stress and struggle to do this because like I said, it, you want it to be that it, it creates this long lasting change in your life. And when we go out of our way to do something and then you sort of feel this heaviness, like, oh, I've got to do this and it becomes so difficult on you, then we, it kind of, it, you, you kind of don't do it with the right intentions. You do it because I have to get it out of the way. It's a chore. A little bit how some of us, Unfortunately, astaghfirullah, may Allah forgive us, approach Salah. You know that feeling when um, Salah time comes and you're just like, oh, I've got to get it out of the way. I've got to do my wudu. I've got to, I've got to pray. And it, it kind of, you know, unfortunately, Allah's blessed us with Salah so we can stand in front of him five times a day and we can make time for the one who created time and then the way we approach it. So you see the, this shift that we need in our mind. We want to do something that feels that, that we're not going to approach it like that. Because And if we are approaching our salah like that, our minimum, our bare minimum, our fara'id, then it's time to change that as well. Because this is our fara'id. And by the way, our fara'id are non-negotiable. I know in this day and age when we, see, when we hear that a person is praying their five daily prayers, we're like, subhanAllah, that person is amazing. They're like a wali of Allah. But bear in mind that this fara'id 
is our bare minimum. And if we're not doing this and we're, and we're, 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 we're approaching it like it's a huge struggle, then it's time to check in with ourselves and think about the life that we're living. Are we living a life that's for Allah? Or are we um, saying that I'm living my life for me and I'm going to try and fit Allah in there somewhere, somehow, if I can. Because if it's like that, then, guys, this is a wake-up call. We need to change the way we are approaching our life. Because at the end of the day, you know, like the way Allah mentions in the Quran so many times that this, and the words Allah uses, it, it says that this world is short. This dunya is so short. When Allah talks about the hereafter, it's like as though it's coming soon. And we approach this world as though it's all there is. This is all we're living for, this dunya, this world. So how we're approaching our ibadah, as if we can't, we, we have to step out of that force ourselves out of that, billahi min shaitan rajim step out of that and think, no, I can't appro- approach my ibadah like that because at the end of the day, this whole world, Allah created us. Why? For the purpose that we worship him. But what do we do? Astaghfirullah, may Allah forgive us, we're worshipping the dunya. We do everything for the dunya. And this is a reminder to myself, that's because it's easy to forget. This world is full of distractions. That's what the world is. It's full of fitna, distractions, the worldly desires. We want this. We want a bigger house, a bigger car. We want a, a bigger everything, a better job, more money, more, more, more money. And until, and we never rest. We never actually rest. So we have a question from one of our viewers, inshallah. And um, um, thank you so much for asking your questions. And please do, if there's any other questions, do send them in. Um, so somebody's asking about the monthly cycle and I know this one is a huge one coming towards Ramadan because it does affect the, our fasting, our prayers and everything like that um, it's going to it's been going on for two weeks so she's worried that her menstrual cycle has been going on for two weeks and can she pray or fast okay so in um, so our menstrual cycle okay, according to the Hanafi fit by the way it can go on for a maximum of 10 days. So minimum three days, maximum 10 days. Now, anything after these 10 days is not actually classed as a period or your monthly bleed. And we do actually have to pray. So find out when it has been 10 days and all those salah or fast that you may have missed after that, well, it's not Ramadan yet, but any prayers that you have missed after that, then it's really important that you make them up. A little bit about this as well. So if you do find that maybe it's in Ramadan or out of Ramadan and you are bleeding over 10 days, then it's really important that you do a ghusl and you do wudu before each prayer. So let's say you're still bleeding, but you know it's more than 10 days. This is class as istihada. This isn't, a, it, this isn't your menstrual bleed. This is something else. Maybe you should go to a doctor or maybe this is something that you need to, um, you, maybe there's something to do with your health or something like that. But whatever it is, just ensure that you have done your ghusl after the 10 days, the 10 days, 10 nights of bleeding. And then for each prayer, so fajr time comes, do wudu, pray fajr. Then dhuha time comes, do a fresh wudu and um, do and attend and do your prayer, inshallah. And with fasting, it's okay. You can fast as normal. And um, after those 10 days and 10 nights, if you are can, if still bleeding, carry on fasting as normal, inshallah. And, I, um, and if you do follow another school of thought, then it's really important that you check with a local scholar or a local alim, alima, whoever it is that can help you figure out how to calculate what days are your days of hayf, that's your menstrual bleed, and what days are istihada, which is maybe bleeding because of an illness or health complications, inshallah. I hope that helps, sister. I know these questions, these fiqh questions when it comes to um, bleeding and in the time of Ramadan, it's very important that we get the correct knowledge and correct understanding because we don't want to miss out on this precious opportunity to keep our fast. And I hope that does answer your question, inshallah. If there are any other questions about this, feel free to drop them um, on our like in, in WhatsApp us or drop them in the comment section on our Facebook page, inshallah, and I will help you through them. And uh, hopefully... I can help you understand whether you should be fasting or if you can um, class it as a monthly bleed. And especially for new mothers as well, if you've given birth, obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, um, you, you have a bleed there, there's a bleed there. And I know th- these things aren't spoken about openly. And unfortunately, that means that we don't have the correct knowledge going forward about how to how to understand where we need to be praying and when we don't need to be praying. At the end of the day, Allah's put that there 
and it's a blessing. And I've spoken about this in episodes previously that Allah actually gives you rest from fasting and gives you rest from salah. And we sometimes see this as, oh, okay, I'm not fasting. So then I need to do more of something else. I need to do more housework. I need to prepare more meals in that time. No, Allah is saying that I'm giving you a rest from ibadah, as in not ibadah or, or like the physical ibadah, which is like fasting and praying because you're meant to rest. So take that on, take that blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and actually rest your body. And this is something that I strongly, strongly feel about for women. If you are not resting during the time of the month or after you have a baby and you're, and you're bleeding, then you're not honoring your body. At the end of the day, Allah has blessed you with the body you have. It's an amana on you. So whenever, like, unfortunately, because of so much misunderstanding and lack of information, education out there for women, especially from Muslim women, there's so much shame and taboo. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there was never that shame that Allah didn't shame women by giving them a menstrual cycle and a period. Allah blessed us with that. Because he didn't want us to work hard like men. He wanted us to relax because we're women and we are able to do that. We're blessed to be able to do that. But whenever we see a woman who's, it's her time of the month and she's not fasting, we say, go, go, you know, you're not fasting. That means you can do all the dishes. You can, you can do all the cooking and the cleaning because, you know, you, you're on a break. Yes, she's on a break. Allah's given her that break. So that means she's meant to relax because when we don't listen to our body and we're not relaxing, and then we, we're putting stress on our body. Now that stress on our body is something that you will affect us long term. You see that so many people have issues and they have such painful monthly cycles and we, we have a PMS, mood swings, because we're not listening to our body. And Allah is saying, listen to your body. Even me, I'm saying, don't pray, don't fast right now, don't stand up in salah right now because you're meant to relax. So take this opportunity to, um, to deepen the understanding and have a better understanding of your body and your womb and um and doing good by your body because this body is an amana inshallah hopefully with time and as the weeks go by i can speak to you a lot more about this and how to um really connect with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because at the end of the day the womb you know which we have so much shame when we talk about we don't want to talk about it people feel so uncomfortable there may be people listening to this right now and feeling uncomfortable but the truth is allah's blessed this is a blessed part that allah's blessed us with the womb allah chose that place for to, so that we can carry a child a blessed place you know so like a child is placed it's like from the the land of the souls into our womb Allah chose that and I've said this before as well in a previous episode when I talked about the monthly cycle of a woman but Allah could have chosen anywhere for a child to be placed like the same way where our vegetables are they're, they're from they grow from underground right they grow on the ground a potato grows on the ground and we see like carrots potatoes but a baby a beautiful child a baby a fetus where is it it's placed inside the womb of a female that was a blessed place that Allah chose out of all the places so whenever we shame away from our menstrual cycle and we feel so worried to talk about it or ask questions think about it Who's blessed me with this womb? Who's blessed me with this cycle? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to stop shaming and talking about it like as though it's a punishment and take it like it is the blessing that it is, inshallah. I hope that answers your question. I know I did go deeper into that, but I hope this is a... Um, this opens up doors of understanding more about your body and how we... we while whilst looking after our body, is actually us seeing that there's Allah has blessed us, accepting and acknowledging Allah's blessings. Because at the end of the day, Allah wants to be um, acknowledged for the blessings he's given. It doesn't take away or give to Allah's greatness, but we get rewarded for acknowledging what Allah has blessed us with. We get rewarded for saying, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You know, like a lot of people say, oh, Oh, like why you don't need like working out. What's that got to do with? Um, it's not a spiritual thing. Of course it is. Of course it is. The Prophet ﷺ instructed that we live a healthy life. We have the, this month where we're staying away from food. Like to, it, it also has so many benefits where you're, you're cleansing out toxins from your system. Take care of your body with pride, knowing that Allah has blessed you with that. Not because, you know, you've got a fantastic body. Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us with fantastic bodies. But because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with that body. And we know that this is, a, a, you know, it's, it's something sacred. We do our ibadah with this body. We turn to Allah with this body. 
we it takes us through life. Allah's blessed this body to give us the strength to wake up every morning, look after our families, inshallah. So um, in this Ramadan, you know, as well, where we where we approach our health and our food and everything don't see it as i'm gonna literally starve myself all day and then put down that oily stuff in down my throat and fill myself with, with as much sugar as i can take care of your body and that as well is an act of ibadah because we when we stand up in prayer we have good energy and we're feeling good and we're not feeling sluggish then 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 we are inshallah then you know allah rewards you for that intention it's all about the intentions guys it's all about how we look at things and how we we change the focus in our life so it's less about us and the world we desires and more about how can i use this situation to actually gain the pleasure of allah how can i make this a spiritual thing for me inshallah um inshallah i speak to you all after the break assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and welcome back. So we've been getting some great questions today. Thank you guys so much for sharing your questions and asking them because you don't know how many people will benefit from this. So many people who are listening and watching this later on will benefit from your questions. So uh, wonderful sisters ask, can a woman can a can a woman who is menstruating touch the Quran and read and recite it? So when it comes to menstruating, no, we're actually not allowed to touch the Quran because we are menstruating. We're not in that state of purity at that time and we aren't able to recite it as well. You are able to recite the Quran. I just want to point out here that you are able to recite verses of the Quran for protection. For example, like if you're reading the, the quls, ayatul kursi, and all these verses which are in the Quran, sort of fatiha, like for shifa, for um, protection, all of that, you can read them. But touching the Quran and just general recitation that we do in, in Ramadan, we should refrain from doing that. There are a few exceptions, for example, like if a woman has memorized the Quran and she is really, really concerned that if she doesn't recite it, then she'll forget it. Then we have ex exceptions like this. And there are other exceptions, like if you are a woman who teaches Quran and you have to... Um, recite verses out loud then you can do so but do ensure that you're breaking up the verses and you're not doing it for the sake of just simply reciting of course um this doesn't mean that we cannot connect with allah still in this month that doesn't mean we can't say his name we can do dhikr we can do istighfar we can do durud and i always say to women as well that if you are menstruating and you know that you are going to come on your period in ramadan or any time of the year actually for maybe a couple of days maybe it's five days Take out that time, allocate those days and say, in that time, I'm going to concentrate on different kind of ibadah. Maybe it's learning more about the Prophet ﷺ's life, doing more sirah, looking at the translation of the Quran, because it's nice to allocate a time for your ibadah as well, because when we don't allocate our time and we say, oh yeah, we'll just do anything whenever, wherever, then it, we actually don't manage to get things done. So one advice that a beautiful sister once gave me is that when it is that time of the month, say that this is the ibadah i'm going to focus on and um and this is what i want to do in that time and it doesn't like don't feel bad that you're not reciting quran because you can still be close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you can still make loads of dua you can still learn more you can still do dhikr you can still do istighfar and you can actually gain so much out of that time of the month that you have inshallah but that was a fantastic question. Thank you so much for asking thank you so much for sending this question in because I know so many people will benefit from that. So inshallah, I want to continue talking more about how to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan, out of Ramadan as well. But obviously because it's Ramadan and we're all feeling that we're feeling more motivated to be spiritual, to connect with Allah more. And it's so amazing that we have this. It's so amazing that we have Ramadan for this because if we didn't have Ramadan, like imagine like we, we a whole month, that's like it honestly can bring back that light that we've been missing all year round and get us feeling rejuvenated, renewed for the whole year to come until the next Ramadan. Like imagine if we didn't have it. Imagine we'll just go on and we'll just feel lower and lower and have this dip and we, it could carry on. And now the billah, we can really fall off the bandwagon of doing good deeds and 
connecting with Allah. So Alhamdulillah, do you know the way Allah has given us our deen? It's so complete. It's so amazing how Allah has given us our five daily prayers where we have, we have to stand up and pray to him. But it's, it's a time to like, um, to connect, right? Like it's now, like when you see everyone talks about meditation, you know, and meditating is very good for us, you know, meditating, taking time out to be still, to be present. And subhanAllah, Allah has already given this in us. As Muslims, we already have this. We have time to meditate five times a day. People talk about listening to meditation videos. And I always see around, especially people suffering from a lot of anxiety or stress to meditate in the night, meditate in the morning, take time to meditate in the middle of the day because just feeling present in your body feeling connected is such a huge thing subhanallah allah has already given this in our deen time to connect time to feel present to remove ourselves from any worldly affairs and solely focus on the on on ourselves and our connection with allah we raise our hands and we hand when we raise our hands in salah, when you say, when we raise our hands to takbir, it's like as though we put in the world behind us and we're saying, I'm focusing on Allah now, everything else is insignificant. Amazing, right? And when we bow down in ruku, we're humbling ourselves to Allah. And we're saying, I'm helpless over everything, ya Allah, and I'm humbling myself before you. And not only are we humbling ourselves physically, we're humbling our existence in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we place our forehead on the ground for sujood and it's as though like we we're, we're literally we're, that's the closest we can be to Allah and that's amazing Allah's you that's the closest you can be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world and that is in sujood and we get to do that multiple times a day Allah has given that opportunity to us to do that multiple times a day amazing right and then we have Ramadan that comes for a month every year for us to rectify our intentions get ourselves back on on to and to rectifying intentions, making changes into our life, bringing about positive change for ourselves, for our families, for everyone, inshallah. So we do have a question from another viewer. I'm just going to quickly read it through. Thank you so much for sending in such amazing questions, guys, today. So I, I really love hearing your questions. I love reading them and I love answering them so much. So to... Um, so somebody has asked if you can read the Quran. I think this is from another sister. Thank you, sister. Jazakallah khair for sending you questions. She'd like to complete the Quran. So she's asking if she can wear gloves to touch the Quran because um, she, otherwise she won't be able to complete it. So like I said, when it comes to reading the Quran, we look, Allah will know your intentions. I know you want to complete the Quran, but actually Allah is saying that is we shouldn't be touching or reciting the Quran. I know a lot of people do it with gloves and especially teachers. I, I've seen a lot of people do this when they are teaching the Quran and they use a pen or use a glove to touch it. But remember, recitation in this time, no, you're not allowed to recite the Quran. You are allowed to look at the words of the Quran. You are allowed to look at them and you're allowed to, you know, say it in your mind, but actually reciting, reciting it out loud is not allowed during this time and if you're worried that i won't be able to finish the quran and you really want to do it um like i said try your best try your best and allocate times in which you can read it like i always say um to do like about five pages after each salah and you kind of do it if you obviously it's great if you're not if you are if you're sort of if you can do it consistently but if you have that time of the month that is coming in and you're not able to do that then just do a little bit more whether it's um, seven pages for each salah then you kind of are able to get it done it's just about using your time really wisely but if you aren't able to do it don't feel guilty about it because Allah knows you have young children. SubhanAllah, you are raising, you are literally the mother of raising these children. You're raising the next generation and they, Allah knows your effort at the end of the day. Allah's not going to say that you stop raising your children and, and, and only focus on this because at the end of the day, Allah has placed reward for that in you in raising your children feeding your children taking care of them that requires energy and focus on that and don't burn yourself out but of course do more try your hardest but Allah knows your efforts and Allah knows your intentions and Allah knows how much you do try and just try your best at the end of the day you know I know so many sisters maybe they've just um, learned how to re read the Quran very recently and they, they find it hard. You know, when you start learning to read the Quran, whether you've seen it with your children or somebody that has recently learned and you recite it very, very slowly. 
and you're breaking the words and you're trying to blend the words, join them together. And for these people, maybe it's not possible to do the whole Quran in one Ramadan. It's okay. Allah knows. Of course, we try. We try our best. And maybe one day for those people, they'll get there. But don't worry because Allah knows your intention. Allah knows what you are trying to achieve. And it's less, it's more about what you were able, the quality of what you recite and how you felt when you're reciting that. Were you able to connect with the Quran when you were reciting that? Or were we just like sitting back and, you know, just reciting the Quran, just trying to get to the end of the juz before iftar? whatever it is and we're just trying to do that and there's no sincerity behind that recitation instead don't worry sister if you're not able to finish the quran just make what you do recite make it so that it penetrates the heart and subhanallah when i was teaching i, I actually i have the opportunity to teach quran most days and it's something i love to do and it, it's it's amazing and i do it because it allows me to teach others Quran but it also allows me to connect with the Quran as well keep discipline with that and today I was we were um, in Surah Maryam and it was talking about the signs of the believers that when they listen to the Quran what do they do that they, they tears fall for the, from their eyes and then they fall down into prostration and it was and it was such, such a beautiful eye to read and it really got me thinking that sometimes we're just reading for the sake of reading and if it doesn't actually penetrate our heart, but we're not reading anybody's words. This is the Lord of the world. Allah's words that we're reciting. And when we can, whether it's a verse or the whole Quran, but if that ayah that we recite penetrates our heart to the extent that it softens the heart. You know, when you hear stories about people and they turn to Islam simply by hearing the Quran, not even the translation of it, simply the words, the Arabic words of the Quran, and it softens the heart and you're thinking, wow, what is that? What is that? That somebody tell me what that is because that made that shifted my heart. That's how we want to feel with the Quran, but we've become so numb and we need to bring back that intentional ibadah now. We need to do it now, not just doing ibadah for the sake of doing it and doing it because we have to get to the end of the Quran or the end of that salah. Do it with intention, inshallah, and do it for simply only for the sake of earning the pleasure of Allah. Because when you taste that sweetness of doing an act for solely for the sake of Allah and nothing else, not out of fear for Allah, because I'm scared that if I don't do it, then what the consequences, simply because that pleasure that we find in doing that act for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so great that it's better and sweeter than anything else that we can possibly imagine. That's when we are, are the way we do our ibadah, it changes. It really does change. And this is what we want. And this is when I was talking uh, previously about doing one act. Th that's how we should feel about the act. But it's so sweet to us. It's so dear to us that the world can be wasted. You can be in a way. But that act that we do, it feels so good that the whole world can wait for you. It doesn't matter what kind, what time of the day is. That that act that you do for Allah is so sincere. It's so dear to your heart that when you do it, it fills your, fills, it just, you know, that fills your heart with that feeling that, that I can't explain the feeling, but you know the feeling, right? If you, you know, if, inshallah, I hope you do know, but it's such an amazing feeling. I can't even put words to it, but that's how we want to feel about it, inshallah. So that intention, make the intention. And if you're a mother, you know, if you're busy with your family, remember there's so much reward in that too. Subhanallah, like we get so, we feel so guilty. But remember that Allah is so, so merciful. He's our Rahman and he is constantly finding excuses to bless us every single day for all of our actions, inshallah. So we will continue with this after the break, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Welcome back. So thank you for all the questions that you guys have sent in so far. They've been so beneficial. And if you have benefited from this episode today, I will say give sadaqa on your knowledge. Anything you learn, share with others because we want it to be that it's a sadaqa jariya for all of us that we share knowledge that is beneficial for you know for everybody. We're, you know we're living in this world. It's crazy how we share so much 
online. We share, we, we're constantly sending each other funny messages through Instagram, WhatsApp, memes, funny videos, YouTube clips that just make you laugh. And whenever we see like something beneficial, it's like, okay, I'll, I'll do that. I'll watch it later. But we're filling ourselves with so much. We have such um, easy access to information and knowledge, but we kind of don't share it because I don't know why we should, we really should. So inshallah, share this with others. If you're watching this on Facebook, share it on your profiles or wherever, share it with your friends because you don't know who will benefit from this. We never know because sometimes we get reminders and they hit us differently. We, Allah sends us reminders when we need it the most. And it's like when, also when we're reading the Quran as well, every time we read the Quran, we can gain something from it. Like the Quran, the changes, the words never change. But our state is constantly changing. We're constantly evolving as humans. And as we change and as our needs change and how we feel changes, the Quran will bring something for you every single time that will benefit you. And it's not like you can read the same verses, the same eyes, and you can learn something new every single time. It can comfort you in a different way every single time, inshallah. And remember, like, and like, making dua as well like you can make dua you can make dua for the same thing each time every single day in ramadan make dua because don't feel shy that yeah allah i'm making dua for the same thing all the time and i'm embarrassed of that because at the end of the day you keep asking and allah will answer that for you allah will whatever it is allah will bring you good from that like sometimes there's like uh, so just talking about dua there's etiquette in making dua as well like whenever we are making dua, because I know that a lot of us will be upping our dua, making more dua in Ramadan. Remember to start your dua by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes people think that, oh, if I spend so long praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, imagine you have like three minutes till iftar, and that's when most people are spending more time uh, making dua. And usually everyone at that time, they have their hands raised, they have their dates, their water there. And we're thinking, I've got a little bit of time, especially, you know, the blessed, the, the mothers who are in the kitchen, the wives and the women who are usually in the kitchen and then they have such little time. Of course, you know, you can make dua throughout the day and then we sit down and we think, I just need to quickly ask Allah for everything I need to ask him for, all my needs. Start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll tell you why in a second. Because we're thinking, if I, we do have this mentality that if I spend too much time praising Allah, then I won't have time to ask Allah. Now, think about the most generous person that we could ever find in this world, in this world, yeah, in this dunya. And they're so generous. They're known for their generosity. And if you went up to them and you, you praise them, and they, I don't know, they made you, let's say, they made you a cake and they gave it to your family. And you went to that, that was amazing. I love that. You, you gave me something so great. And because that person is known for their generosity, they'll say, of course, I'll make it for you again. I'll give you the recipe. I'll give you something like, you know, because they're known for their generosity. Now think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we, Allah already knows what we need. Allah knows our needs more than we know our needs. Now, when we turn to Allah and praise Allah for his greatness, do you not think that Allah will give you something in return? Allah is already listening. Allah already knows exactly what you need. So, use this opportunity at least at the beginning of your dua praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send the rule upon the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do istighfar and I'm not saying that you you can't make dua unless you do this but this is such a good way of making dua it's such a um, it's you, you're humbling yourself you're praising Allah you're sending durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then you're humbling yourself and asking for forgiveness, and then go ahead and ask Allah for anything you want, everything you want. And remember, don't be ashamed of asking Allah for everything and anything you want. We sometimes often think that this is too much. Let me sort of um, let me let me make my dua a little less. Let me make it a bit more reasonable. We want to ask for things that seem reasonable. Like, I don't want to ask for this. It feels like, I don't think, because it doesn't seem realistic. Who are you asking from? You're not asking from humans. We're asking from Allah. Allah, it doesn't take, think about it like this. It doesn't take away from Allah's greatness to give us. It's not like Allah has to check in his, in his pockets and say, oh, let me see what I can give my servant to Allah is subhanAllah, sometimes we have such a limited understanding of Allah, but it's like, as though uh, there's this example that I once read and it goes like, if you were to put a thread into the ocean and we were to take that thread out, 
will that take away from the ocean? The water that came up onto that thread, will that take away from how great the ocean is? No, it wouldn't. And that's the same thing with Allah. When Allah gives us, don't feel ashamed in asking for the best of the best because you are asking the king of all kings, the king of the universe. So ask Allah and don't feel ashamed because Allah will give you and he will give you and give you and give you and continuously giving you because that doesn't, Allah is all generous and Allah will give you. But ensure that our blessings are blessings that we are grateful for and not blessings that will be used against us because we're not grateful for them and we are, and we often think that they're because of us. You know, like, especially like in this day and age, we, 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 it's so unfortunate the way we become, it's so unfortunate. And I say these reminders to myself, especially because whenever we think about ourselves and what we've achieved in life, whether it's worldly things or even spiritual, spiritually, like we could learn so much of the Quran. For example, we can learn verse after verse and ayah after ayah, surah after surah, chapter after chapter. And we think, wow, it's because I worked so hard for this. And yeah, you're right. You, you need to put effort behind these things. But remember, where did that guidance come from? Who gave you that ability to wake up every morning and recite the Quran and learn the Quran that was only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Sometimes we're so prideful and we think, Look at the house we have. I'm so much better than this person. We don't say it out loud, but we think it. Because of my hard work, because of my skills, my this, my that, because of me, I've got this. I ain't ain't because of you. Chill, relax. It's not because of you at all. Actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with that. Now, Now, use this and think and know and seriously, honestly know that everything that you have is because of Allah. Everything you have, the fact that we have iman, we we are we're on deen. We often think it's because of something good that we've done. Yeah, because Allah's Allah guidance is from Allah. Guidance is from Allah. We're lucky. Alhamdulillah. When's the last time we said Alhamdulillah for the fact that we were born Muslims or we've got guidance or we've become Muslim, whatever it is, that was from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It wasn't because of us. It wasn't because of us. There's not. It's everything that we have. And it's a really good reminder because sometimes we think that, you know, in this, like, especially now, like, we are, a lot of people are struggling at the moment mentally. I hear it a lot all the time. Whenever you go out, the conversation is, oh, like, the bills, the fuel, the price, the fuel's going up, the gas bill's going up, or whatever it is. Everyone's concerned. Everyone's talking about, did you check your bill? Like, what's going on? Everyone's worried. Honestly, like, so much concern. But the thing that we need to remember is, Hold up, before the fuel prices went up, before the gas prices went up or whatever it is, who was taking care of you? Who was honestly taking care of you then? It was Allah. Now the prices are gone up. Do you think Allah's going to say, no, I'm not going to take care of you no more? You think that you are able to afford things because of you and it's because Allah gave you that risk. Allah had written your risk for you, whether that was in the form of money or or peace or a good family whatever that was Allah's already providing for you so whenever we're constantly worried it's sometimes a really important to think say to look back and contemplate and think that I I don't have I'm not able to afford this or do this because of my own myself it's because Allah's placed barakah in my life and he took care of us when the prices were down you don't think he's going to take care of you when the prices are up of course he's you were a baby you were a baby and you had no power at all. You literally were a helpless child, but you didn't go hungry. You had food, you had shelter. You, Allah took care of you until you are as you are now. Did you have any say in that? No, you didn't. You just, you were a child. The same way, Allah's still taking care of you, so don't worry. I know it's a huge concern. It's a huge concern for us, but it's really important to understand that everything that we have, all the blessings that we have, all the goodness that we have in our life is from Allah and it's nothing to do with us. Because, uh, you know, I do like for, you know, my Muslim brothers and sisters, I talk, uh, you know, I work with men. I always say, be confident in your abilities because Allah likes that you, the difference between being confident and the difference between a spiritual person being confident and just being confident because you think you're great and mighty and we have so many skills, there's that kind of confidence, which a lot of people have, but have confidence, but ref- take that back and say, it's because of Allah's blessed me with this. Because that confidence is good. That's not arrogance. That's saying, I have whatever I have in my life. I have beauty. I have wealth. I have this. I have good health. 
I, I, I'm a good speaker. I'm a funny person. People like me. Say it. it's okay. We don't need to shy away from the things we have. But I'm saying use that and say it's because Allah has blessed me with that. You could be a people's person. People really like you. It's because Allah placed love for you in people's heart. Alhamdulillah, take that back and thank Allah with it. Because now that blessing can't be used against you because you've taken that back and said, it's because Allah, Allah has blessed me with this. So continuously be grateful for the blessings that you have in your life. And, and this is also a way to connect with Allah for you every day. Because sometimes we think everything is because of us. Everything that we're trying for as well, we work so hard thinking, if I do this, I will get this. No, you will put the effort in and Allah will give you what, what is coming for you. Allah is giving you what you're, what's coming for you already. So that is a source of comfort as well. Like, do you know when something, we, we try so hard for something and it doesn't go our way and we're so upset and we're broken by it and we're like, oh, what, why did Allah do this? Maybe Allah was saving you from something. Maybe Allah was saving you from something or maybe Allah's got something better in store for you. And we just don't know it because we're so zoomed in. We have like, we zoom in on the situation, think, no, 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 this is all it can be for me. And if it's not this, then what is it? And Allah's taken that away from me. Why? Why have I done it? Is Allah testing me? Yeah, Allah may be testing you, but Allah tests those who he loves. And how we deal with every situation, how we look at every situation is so important. Allah literally places us in situations. He will pick you up and put you in a situation and you will see how you deal with it, inshallah. So let us deal with situations with grace, with Allah on our side. Because situations that we're in can really increase the love that we have for Allah and really build that connection that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I pray that everybody has an amazing Ramadan. Keep me in your prayers, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Allah, ya Allah.